Audio and sound levels are things that often get overlooked because they can be quite time consuming and difficult to get just right. So anything to make these processes simpler and quicker is a bonus in my book. Is that even a saying? A bonus? <laughs> bonus in my book? No. Anything to make these processes simpler and quicker is a bonus. So I've actually created a pack of EQ and compression presets for Adobe Premiere Pro to give you that professional audio quality. You just download those from my website, there's a link below, import them into Premiere Pro and then drag and drop. It's as simple as that and it saves you so much time. And I use them on every video that I do. Anyway, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about a feature in Premiere Pro called audio ducking. But before we get into that, I'm gonna introduce a new segment called tutorial time. Tutorial time. <laughs> I'm not sold on the name yet, but why not keep things simple? There's a hair dangling. Tutorial time it is. But before I roll the intro for this, I best come clean and tell you that I haven't made one yet. So all there is to show you is this. <laughs> I will make a proper intro for it, I promise. So audio ducking is a feature within Premiere Pro that basically automates the volume of your music track or any track that you assign it to. So if you've got an underscore for your video, whatever it is, it might be a documentary for example, and you've got some visuals and the music playing underneath, but then somebody starts talking, what audio ducking will do is automatically drop out the music or lower the volume of the music when the person starts talking. So basically you don't have to go through and manually change the volume of the track yourself. So you can save so much time just by using this feature and I'm really excited to show you how it works. You basically set the parameters, click apply and you're done. It's as simple as that but there are a few things that I want to mention whilst we're doing this. So get a project open, follow along and enjoy the video. Let's do it. Yes, I've got headphones on now. That's because of editing. Right, so we're in our project. We've just got a little clip here that I'm that I'm working on. It's just my outtakes. If you've not seen the outtakes, go and have a look on my Instagram account. It's Sam Holland YouTube. To enable audio ducking, it's really simple. Click on your music clip and then go over to Essential Sound. It's over here on the top right panel. If it's not there, go on Window and make sure Essential Sound is ticked. What we need to do now is make sure that this music clip is assigned as a music clip so that Premiere Pro knows what audio it's working with. Make sure your clip selected and assign it to music. So you're telling Premiere Pro that this is a music clip. And then it brings up this box here. You just click ducking and then it enables these functions. So underneath ducking, it comes up with duck against. You need to tell Premiere Pro what to change the volume against. So in this example, I want the music to be lowered when dialogue comes in. Duck against dialogue clips. However, at the moment, Premiere Pro doesn't know there's any dialogue, so we have to tell it by selecting all of our dialogue clips and then assigning those clips to dialogue. So now Premiere Pro knows that this is a music clip and these are dialogue clips. Now we've assigned those clips, we're gonna alter the settings. The first thing I do is set the volume of the music to what it would be if there were no dialogue. So I'm gonna press play and see where we're at. Usually it peaks at zero and I don't really want that. So I'm just gonna press play and lower the volume till we get to about between minus three, minus six, something like that. Maybe if I lower my seat. There we go. So at the moment now it's peaking around minus six. It's going to be different depending on what music clip you're using. So so you're just going to have to play it back and see where you're at. And this is just the way I do things, by the way. You don't have to copy this exactly. And that sets our music volume. The next thing we want to do is tell Premiere Pro 
how much to lower the volume by when the dialogue does come in. Now I like to aim for the music to be around minus 25 dB when there's dialogue. So we need to tell Premiere to duck this by a further 20 dB. So, so that should lower the volume by that amount. Your fades, this is how quickly the music would fade in and out. So you can either have a slow fade or a quick fade. Just to start with, I'm gonna set my fades to around 300 milliseconds. Sensitivity, I'm just gonna leave it as the default to start with and then we can adjust when we listen back and check to see what it's like. Generate keyframes. And you'll see, here we go. It's generated all these keyframes for us where the volume drops out. So let's go ahead and have a listen. Maybe if I lower my seat, I won't hit my head. That's better. There we go. You've got a wider grip so you can be... I've not really thought about this. So there we go, as you can see, that saves so much time not having to go in and manually change the volume levels of everything. It's all taken care of for us. There might be a few things that I would tweak. That works for me. I like the fade time. I think 300 milliseconds works really well. The duck amount is perfect. It might be a tad too loud, so I could just bring the level down a little bit more. Generate keyframes again. What is the killing? And it's warm. Don't want batteries to die either. It's got a little cable. I think we're there, to be honest. Let me just show you what it's like when you change the sensitivity. Let's, so let's go high and generate keyframes again. Right, so as you can see. I won't hit my head. That's better. So now because it's really sensitive, Premiere Pro can hear my chair being lowered there. So it's not raising the volume of the music. Head. That's better. There we go. You've got a wider grip so you can be... I've not really thought about it. So that's good. I, I quite like that. And then if, if we put the sensitivity to low, see what happens. Got a lot more keyframes now. Maybe if I lower my seat. That's better. There we go. You've got a wider grip so you... So basically that you've got to be really loud for Premiere to lower the volume of the track there. So I'm gonna put it back to six. Right, my next question is, can you save this as a preset? This is what I wanna know. Yes, you can. Love Premiere Pro. Top right corner here, save settings as a preset. So let's call this Sam Audio Ducking. One. So when we go into our audio ducking features now and we click on preset, there we go, Sam audio ducking one. It's there. So now, as long as I've recorded the audio at the similar volume, I can always apply that preset and I know it's gonna be the same. So that is a great feature. I love that you can save presets with these things. Now there may be times still when you need to alter the volume levels manually. And that's fine, that's natural. Sometimes with any sort of automation, there'll be a time where you need to take over anyway to make sure it's perfect. But to get the ball rolling to start with, this is a great tool to be able to use. And it just speeds things up so much. You might be thinking that because you have to set all these parameters to start with, is it not quicker to just go in and put your, to put your keyframes in manually? <sighs> yes and no, really. It depends what you want to do. Sometimes, you need to be very specific with what you're trying to achieve. And then at that point, yes, it's probably quicker to do it manually. But when you're doing tutorial videos like this or a documentary, for example, it's, it's ideal to have something set like this that you can just click and it generates all the keyframes for you. Because sometimes I've forgotten to take the level, the volume level down on it on a certain clip. So having this feature would have helped so much. Um, and then that gives you your starting point and then you can just go in and tweak a few bits if you need. So once you've had a go a couple of times and messed about with the sensitivity, it's nice and easy. Save your preset, it's done. So this has been the first tutorial time. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
hope it's given you something new to try and I hope above all it saves you time in your editing workflow. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more gear reviews and tutorials like this one and I think that's it. Have a good week, stay safe, see you in the next video, see you next week.